the last couple of years it have been really rough and hard. And, it, and a lot of my series, The Folded Female, really was about folding within and unfolding in another way. But the flaws and the lines and the marks are left behind, which is life. And if you want to say politics, the world, environment, it all affects us. And then you unfold in another way. So for me, it was I was going internal. But luckily, as an artist, you can experience it and create something externally. When I was teaching children, I was telling them the first time I realized something was art. And I remember that moment. I remember, for me, it was Van Gogh. Van Gogh was the first artist that I personally connected to in a really strong way. I stood in front of it and I realized it was everything that I loved. It was mark making, texture, passion, emotion, color, line. So it had all these things that I didn't understand when I was that age that it would affect me for the rest of my life. I always kind of thought of myself more as a maker. I didn't think like I want to be an artist. Um, I am an artist. Sometimes my joke is that I go to my studio every day, but sometimes I make art. I wasn't really good at school. It was okay. Um, my book reports did much better when I drew the cover. So, you know, I just kind of realized really that I started That's getting really attention through the visual arts. I communicated better than I did in other formats. So I kind of just found myself there. I go through the phase of being really monochromatic. That's because of my love of charcoal and paper. I go through a period where I have to just draw black and white, black and white, and find that rhythm of mark making and erasing and layering. And then in the winter, it's like all those years that I spent going to the Met when I was a little kid, all of those romantic expressionist paintings are in my head. And I have a series that I reflect and I create my feeling of the paintings. I absolutely identify so strongly with New York and the Met. It was definitely um, really inspirational and educational for me my entire life. My dad grew up in Manhattan and we moved to Long Island. And the one thing that he did was that he kept the family dentist. And every time we went to the dentist, we'd go to the Met. My mom would say, oh, let's go to the Met. That was just part of my life. It was just, I thought everyone went to the Met when you went to the dentist. I mean, you go to the dentist, you go to the Met. I realized that all those years, that was part of my education. It was my visual artistic education of constantly being in the Met. And it's about scale. I was a really little kid and these paintings were so big. And the Rosa von Hers Horse Fair, it's a huge painting. It is the size of a wall. And it is passionate and beautiful and it has energy and movement. It speaks to everything that I try to speak to in my work. It brought all my emotions and I stood in front of that painting and I felt it completely. And I'll never forget, my mom whispered in my ear and she said, and it was done by a woman. And I had no idea what she meant, but I thought, of course it was done by a woman. I love horses and of course the woman painted it, but not until I was at Pratt and I went to the Met, I realized what she meant. And I also realized that I didn't understand the paintings, but I felt them. So my series, when I go back to and reference the masters, it's always about a feeling. A lot of the um, sculptures, especially in the other room, the one that's adorned, um, they're, they're mobiles. They're meant to move and dance. They become their own characters. Like sometimes I come in here and I'm working by myself, but I think I work with all these ladies and I hang out and we talk and then I reinvent them and move them and create a different piece. So this woman right here, she was a tall woman in the flat iron. She was this woman who was hanging and dancing. And then because of everything that was happening politically in the world, she folded. She folded within herself and just paused. 
until she'll come open again and become something else. So that's why I love them. Like I was always attracted to theater and acting and dance when I was a kid. I actually thought I was gonna go into that, but instead I'm able to create these pieces that have their own story, drama, or emotion that they want to send out. So it's my way of kind of connecting all of the arts that I love, sound, music, dance, theater, poetry, it all comes into one piece that I could cut and fold and put on a wall. So for me, that's um, a little bit of a magical spot for me that I'm able to put all of that into one piece. So I, I fall in love with the paper ones, even though they're so fragile, but it's part of the fragility that I love. I love the fragility. I love the having to fix them. And um, they just, they're, they're, they're more real to me. I'm just going to show a couple of pieces here. They, these are actually made out of paper. Some are made out of metal. Some are done intuitively. Some are done kind of planned. I find them to be finished pieces, but I also definitely think of them as, um, again, a maquette for sculptures in metal. Here's some clay work. I did this at Salem Artworks. It's a really great residency. If you want to look into it, that's called Saw. And I made a lot of um, clay pieces there and wood pieces and put them in their wood fire. And it's a really great place to work. So I have a lot of different kind of organic folded females here. These are all the maquettes and I hand cut these and bent them. They're made out of metal. And so these were done by me, but I also work with a fabricator who does them really heavy and big with much thicker gauge metal. I guess this would be called my more decorative stuff. I love working in ceramics. I love working with clay. These are the pieces that I work on in the winter. And they're all different ceramic pieces that I have fired. And I have a line of ceramics. I, I just can't help but keep working on the ceramics pieces. This is a piece I actually collaborated with, with another artist. That was something that I really love doing and I want to do more of. It was a vessel. A friend of mine, Marilyn Dale, she made the vessels and then I would cut them up and then create other sculptures out of them. So we're going to continue that series together. That was one of the things that I really loved that kind of happened during the pandemic is the ability to um, just come up with other ideas and collaborate with other artists. So that was a really nice thing. I'm really addicted to process. I love making. I love how one thing leads to the next, how one piece inspires the other. However, aspiration wise, I always think small and really big. Sometimes I think about things for three years and then boom, I'll just do them. I've been thinking of a huge relief, a paper relief. If you see the paper reliefs on my wall, I could actually point to them. They're sketches for a really big piece. My really big work that I would love to do is I would love to realize the sculptures in metal, but really large, like 12 by 20 feet for outdoor sculptures. I would love to see them really big and then really little, really precious. I made everything really small and little during the pandemic. I liked fixing things and folding things and mending things and making these little paper sculptures. I just had to work little and more intimately, I guess. And now I'm feeling like I think we're going to be okay and I can work bigger and I can be more expansive. And um, so I guess that for me, it's always emotion. It's definitely emotionally driven. I'm a female. I walk through this world in a female form. I don't always identify it as fully female. It just happens to be the form that I'm in. So it really is more about um, the physical uh, way of drawing a figure, but it's really a way of showing more emotions and um, the feelings of the impact of something and then the outcome of it. So I really use it as a way of 
showing and celebrating my own life, passion, and experiences. Thank you for joining us for the Orange County Arts Council virtual studio visit. This program is made possible by donations from people like you. 50% of donations go directly to the artists featured and 50% to the Orange County Arts Council programs. Please consider donating today. You can donate by going to ocartscouncil.org. The Arts Council's virtual studio visits are presented in partnership with the Newburgh Free Library and are made possible in part by NISCA.